Hi guys, Rich Game Retro here. I'm just going to do a video of my um, <coughs> yeah, my board games or retro board games. I've got quite a few of them, as you can probably see. And I'm just playing a video of Atmosphere, which is hilarious. <laughs> Man, it is funny. <laughs> it's the only reason I kept my VHS. Just for the old retro board games. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so obviously start with atmosphere. There it is. Let's see if I can reach it. Yeah, basically, the main, you basically have a VHS that you put in the machine. And your main aim is to get around the board. Oh, come on. Yeah, is to get around this board and um, to pick up three keys. I think it's three keys. Yeah, to pick up three keys and enter the middle here, which is basically a tombstone. And yeah, there's like the amount of players there is. You, it's the amount of tombstone there is, there is. And yeah, so if there's five of you, there'll be like five tombstones in the middle, and you have to write down your fear, and you have to collect three keys, race to the middle, pick up the keys, and not pick up your own nightmare. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, basically, you got an hour, and um, the gatekeeper keeps on coming up and just basically speaking and just just basically trying to trip you up, really. But yeah, it's a really good game back in the day. I got a, I got a new DVD version, but it's just not the same. It's quite yeah, it's quite funny. <laughs> Yeah, the normal version is just um, the gatekeeper. But there is also the witch. Isn't there? No, this is the zombie. Atmosphere 2. Atmosphere 3 is the witch. And Atmosphere 4 is. I think it's a vampire. Yeah, that wasn't the best one. Yeah, I would say yeah, I would say the zombie was the most funniest one. Those of you on gravestones marked with an X. <laughs> okay, more goes into like the hour. He like he like changes colour. He changes into like yeah, this is dodgy guy, and the music like changes. But yeah, so yeah, so that's atmosphere. I'll probably quickly show you that. I've also got Power. Power the video game. Um, it's a bit like Risk in a way. Here's the pieces. It's one of these ones, if you miss one piece, you're pretty buggered. Yeah, but yeah, you got to use the pieces to, like, attack. Yeah, it's only four player. It's okay, it's an okay game, not one of my favourites, but yeah. This is definitely one of my favourites, and that is Brock Rogers from the Battle for the 21st Century. By TSR Inc. And it's probably got the most pieces in any board game. Shut up. Yeah, I think there's literally like 90 fighters and like 40 or so mutants. And you just have to, yeah, just have to build your bases up where you can actually make your forces and then attack. And you obviously take over land, which is more like planets. So you start the planets, you move, you build your bases, try and get to the asteroid field. And it is, yeah, definitely. It's hours of playing. If there's four of you, it could take hours. But yeah, it's a really good game, Buck Rogers. I wonder what year it is. I know it's quite. I know it's like back in Nam. Oh, can you see that? 1988. Okay, it's sort of like a computer board game. In a way, Donkey Kong. Base just plays a bit like the actual game. But yeah, nothing really. 
Same with Berserk. This is a bit weird, it just doesn't really feel like the actual game. <laughs> this guy's so funny. Okay, Star Wars Monopoly, classic trilogy edition. In the loft, I must have about 40 to 50 different Monopolies. With Star Wars, there's probably about 10 different ones. But yeah, just ones I've picked up over the years. Shut up. Okay, Turtles, the power game. So far as I remember, you have to collect pieces of a pizza. So I haven't played this for a few years, so I can't really remember. 1990. Can't really remember what um we have to do. I remember having a tower kind of game. We have to climb a tower. Yeah, you sort of have to go around the streets and fight. And then collect pizza pieces and pick up a whole pizza. And then you won. Shut up. Okay, Frogger. It's another MB games of the actual computer game. I think they made about 10 of these in the end. Or, no, I think there's about 10. Yeah, I've got three. Okay, some random game I picked up. I've never actually played it. It is Zig, Zig and Zag. It presents deep lemons and utter... Is that duck hairs? Deck hairs. Yeah, looks pretty messed up, to be honest. A completely mad in the head stunt game. <laughs> okay, this came out in 1994. Yeah, I'm having a board game evening, like once a week, so yeah, so I want to try and do a, one of these board games once a, once a week. Okay. So I've got this baby. The all new dungeon. Where did I get it from? British Red Cross, it's quite a big game. And I can't remember this one. Fantasy fun for the entire family. Whose turn is next? Basically, it's, an, basically it's another, it's another Dungeons and Dragons, but actually like a board game version of it, just to make it simpler. I must have missed your middle name. There's a few games like this. I remember playing Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid. And it was just like so hard just to set the characters up. It was just good just to literally just pick up Hero Quest. Which I'll just go into my collection now. Here's Hero Quest. I've picked up loads of Hero Quests over the years. Some are in good condition, some are not. So some have loads of pieces just like that. Yeah, so Hero Quest is basically Dungeons and Dragons, but you've literally got the characters just in front of you. And you just pick them, all the stats are all done. And it's just easy for the Dungeon Master as well, because he's got a massive book to look at. And to sort of follow, and to set the scenario. I've also got another Hero Quest, but this is the same as the last one. But I think this one's in pretty good condition, yeah. This one's just all in the bags. These are the cards, like the elf. And it's just easy, just it says attack, roll, two dice, move, two dice. And it's just so much easier just picking these characters up and just getting on with it. And then you've got your mind, your body points, how many lives. That's the dwarf. And it's just so much easier to pick up and play with Dun unlike Dungeons and Ma Dungeons and Dragons, where you literally spend two hours just setting your characters up. Okay, here's another sort of like Dungeons and Dragons kind of game, and that is Dark World. Man, I've played some of these in yonks. See if I can open it. It looks pretty battered. Open it from there. 
The Adventure's Guide. Yeah, so it's got quite big, big setting up pieces. Man, half of these, I can't even remember how to play them. <laughs> it's so long, some of them. Yeah, well, remember, you just have to fight your way through the castle to defeat some guy. And then you just have to collect coins and hit and miss cards. Yeah, so this is definitely going into one of my gaming nights after. New game after playing. Okay, advanced hero quest. <coughs> Basically the same as hero quest, but you do get more characters, I think. That's what I do, Blue. You got lots of little crazy little men as well with crossbows. Is that right? I don't remember them being in it. Maybe they're not supposed to be in it. Where does crossbow man come from? Yeah, I don't know where these crossbow men come from. Yeah, here's the advanced book. Just a bigger campaign. Oh, they are crossbow men. They're the Doom Guards. The Chaos Warriors in the adventure. Yeah, that's who they are. Yeah, basically just adds another dimension to the game. More, more sort of like campaigns. <laughs> You're gonna be a crazy man. A two. I think so. <laughs> the total is more than 12. Receive a key. Or if not, better luck next time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah, it's> so <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Atmosphere. This is like a sort of like a newer version. Came out later. This is also has a tape. Atmosphere was well big back in the day. Got a different board. I've even got a t shirt. Sealed t shirt. These are the boards. I've got two of these somewhere, so I literally just picked up this one. This one's not as funny as the original though, but yeah, it's another VHS game. Hello. Okay, I also got, got random one of these. I don't know what they are. Dungeon floor plans one. So this guess must be an extra add-on to um yeah add-on to Dungeons and Dragons or any role-play games you can decide. Okay, next game is Key to the Kingdom. No, I love this board. Oh, bloody dusty! Oh my god! 
Okay. I remember it going like that. And then when you went down there, it changed. Yeah, key to the kingdom. Shut up. All I remember is, yeah, you have to travel through the kingdom seeking the golden key. Through the treasures. So there's your characters. Key to the kingdom. I meant the advert used to be well good. That's the reason I got it. Yeah, so you literally have to escape with the key. Well, obviously, there's loads of like hazards and monsters. And there's lots of little variations of the game as well. Like monster cards. Once you found the key. At least one of them. Yeah, you have to find a key and one other treasure. And then you have to, like, yeah, flip the board. So remember it like that, and you go down, and then you have to go along, and that's your escape route over there. The magic roundabout. Key to the kingdom. Okay, Space Hulk. Space Hulk was basically. Oh, what's in here? Here, a quest, quest book. Some hero quest characters in here as well. Yeah, basically it was just like um, Warhammer 40,000, but board game version. Just like Hero Quest, you sort of, you got your character, you have to go around, you can do various campaigns. Oh, where's the book? There isn't a book for it. Where have I put the book? I release those of you banished to the black hole. I got loads of bloody Hero Quest characters in it. You just have to face shitloads of gene stealers in like various boards you used to set up. The manual would normally tell you like <clears throat> what to set up in. Should have another space hog around here somewhere. Another key to the kingdom? <laughs> Got loads of board games. Gene Stealers, which is just an add-on to Space Hulk. You get different Terminators, I think these ones had psychic powers. And you had different Gene Stealers, they looked a bit... They looked more sort of like, deformed. Shut up! Okay, a random game we've only just recently played, and that's Star Wars, the interactive video game. Um, what atmosphere is quite funny. <laughs> this is just absolutely dreadful. It is just so wank. Some people might like it, but I did not. You basically have to build the Death Star the insides of it and disable the Death Star you have to destroy the main systems before it destroyed the rebel planet yeah it's another like hour game and it's yeah it's quite funny yes Also got Blood Bowl. This one, I think, this is one of the later ones. Yeah, you got the palace. It's all power. 
Palestine. Yeah, Palestine. Then you got all the warriors and stuff. Man, I've played this for fucking years. I first got into Blood Bowl because I had the, I had a game for the PC and I was like, what's this? I remember getting this years ago. And I picked up a few from Car Boots as well. Yeah, this one must be one of the earlier ones. Let's go. No, later on, sorry. Yeah, this was like 1992. Also got another gaming sort of like inspired ball game, MB games, Pac-Man. Great, another Star Wars game. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move because I fucking got shit loads of it. Um, another little add-on for Hero Quest. Keller's Keep. A couple of random board games. Don't wake the chicken. It's a bit like Don't Wake Dad. You just have to pick up as many eggs as possible. That's pretty random, actually. Um, <laughs> another advanced hero quest. I've got hero quest coming out my arms, man. But this one's, yeah, this one's really painted by somebody, not me. That's probably why I kept it, because it's every single one has been painted. I'm sure they're supposed to be green. I was a rubbish painter, so I never really got into painting. I'll try and paint their noses and solely paint the whole face. <laughs> Dreadful at painting. Okay, another Monopoly. Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Let's see who is Old Kent Road. Give me some shit, Pokemon. Geo dude. Geo dude. <laughs> Looks like Geo dude. Onyx. Nido King and Queen. Ultra Ball. Yeah, you have to get the Ultra Ball, Master Ball, Guard Ball, and things like Poke Ball. They're like the stations. Yeah, it's a bit different. Just playing that instead of normal Monopoly. <laughs> okay, the next ball game. Talisman. This is just another like board game version with pieces in. There it is, Talisman. Yeah, Talisman's awesome. You basically have to pick your character, or well, most of those like you pick, you just shuffle them and whatever you get, and this is what you receive. Oh, that's quite a lot of characters. Which one did I always used to enjoy? What was the Barbarian? Oh, 
You may choose to get one. Yeah, Tiresman's a really good game. And you got your cat just here. The main aim of the game is to yeah, build up your strength points and your craft. And then enter the middle here. And then fight the demons. I don't know, so many different versions of Talisman, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, you have to get to the get to the center. I've been playing sort of like an up-to-date version of Talisman, and it literally took all day. I spent eight hours, and yeah, I got right near the end. No, my friend got right near the end, and um, I was just like a couple of steps behind him. And when he actually drew the cards in the middle, he got battle royale. <laughs> Which is like all of us have to fight, but if none of us had talisman, we immediately lose the game. So we all lost the game, and it was only me and him. And obviously, we got your you got your spells and stuff. And um, he turned me into a toad, but obviously you have to like roll a dice. So basically, yeah, one to six. And he rolled a one and turned himself into a toad instead of me, <laughs> which was really funny because he had that toad, he had that toad card all game. And yeah, basically I won because the toe was only like a 1-1 one, one strength. Shut up. Okay, I would say my favourite board game of all time. And that is Space Crusade. I've got a few Space Crusades over the years because we used to literally play it for days and days. Remember, we all got it for Christmas, about four or five of us, and we used to join up all these squares and our pieces. This one hasn't got any pieces in, this is just like my extras. So you've got the mission book. And then you got like, yeah. Your little book that says about all the weapons. Marine weapons, what you need to roll with dice, how it shoots. I release you from the black hole. And this was sort of like, yeah. It's a bit like just Dungeon Dragons in space, but obviously a bit like Hero Quest, but it's just much better. Then you had your lives, then you had your points. And this was like the enemy with the the orcs, the Chaos Marines. Hand to hand, how far they could move, and it was just really just really simple. And you had these boards where you, where you just like walked around. And you still got the cards with like move it and stuff, yeah. And then you had to pick up your weapons and orders. Find out who is the oldest. The frail one. Wow, this one's still got my bloody Elder Alien Event. Shut up. What is it? Of course I will. Here's another one. That's the cards. Also the blips. You put the blips like this, so yeah, at basically at the beginning of the game, the dungeon master, or we call him the alien master, would just put down his blips here, and then you would just walk around, and then when you actually were inside, you would turn them over, and that's what it was. So you always have an object of a game of get someplace, and we would just all put them around that room. <laughs> Used to be well funny. Like I've also got a dread, um, yeah, Space Crusade mission. This is just an add on the Dreadnought pack. And this is where I got most of my extra pieces in. Yeah, you get like with the extra add-on, you get like stuff like these, the tarantulas, 
where you have one of these marines behind it and you would move. But it moved really slowly, but be really good. These are the pieces. Wow, I still got the blips and the things. I wonder if there's a dreadnought built somewhere. Yeah, here's another box of all the stuff. These are the dreadnoughts, and this is the big motherfucker that you just put loads of guns on. So yeah, you've put like an assault rifle on it. What is that? Is that a gremlin? What the hell? That was a gremlin for like 20 years ago. <laughs> Have we even got a pog in there? World Tour Pog. Shut up. Oh no, not the black hole. Oh, where's all the bloody cannons and stuff? There he is, that's one cannon. Yeah, you better set up your, personalise your dreadnought with other rocket launcher, plasma beam, assault rifle, I think there's a conversion beam as well. And these are the bases. Yeah, it's quite easy to get into. Takes a while to set up like the board and that, but yeah, you may just like hero quests you sort of had like their own little personal missions you did every time. And further you got through the campaigns, the harder you used to get, more blips. You used to have a little book of where you put all the blips. Is it here? There it is. Yeah, the dreadnought mission back. I remember we were spending days and days just going through each campaign and mission. Yeah, so that was really good. Yeah, shut up, you idiot. Okay, I'm have to move it over here. <laughs> okay, it is original talisman, I think. 1983. All the pieces are there. These go for quite a lot, I think, on eBay. Seems each newer edition you get is a bigger board, but yeah. Once again, you have to go on the outside, draw cards, fight monsters. When you defeat the monsters, you sort of collect them as like trophies. And you have to upgrade your craft, your strength, and then slowly make your way to the middle when, you got, when you've actually picked up a talisman and fight the, the bad guys. Was it that way? Or was it that way? <laughs> I could always undo the back in. That's better. Hmm, there's another little talisman board. What's this one? Oh, this must be one of the dungeons. I almost thought there was just one. There's still quite a lot of paperwork in here. Here's all the adventure cards. So yeah, it's a really good game. Could take all day. Like I said earlier, you could spend all day playing for eight hours and then within a few dice rolls, you're dead. And that's it. <laughs> okay, only a few more to go. Warhammer Quest. The Dungeon Adventures in the Warhammer World. Man, I forgot it's got a wife dwarf, white dwarf in it. Wife dwarf 189. It's got two white dwarfs. <laughs> oh, why have I kept the wife dwarf, white dwarfs in there? Games Day in. Golden Demon 95. Always wanted to go to one of them. I wonder if they still exist. 
when I was younger, I used to be, I used to love, is it Epic? I wonder if they've got anything on Epic, you know. Yeah, nothing on Epic. Warhammer Quest was just basically Hero Quest, but I had that extra stuff on. Dwarf Troll Slayer. <laughs> Shut up. The guy is getting worse and worse. Look at him. Okay, this is Advanced Space Crusade. Compared to the normal Space Crusade, I did not enjoy this at all. There just wasn't as much freedom, and obviously with the blips there wasn't really much customization because you had like, just the Terminators as actually proper characters. So these big ass Terranids. Still got some grass in here. And the guys, you just, yeah, it was just, you couldn't really custom, custom the games, unlike you could the original Space Crusade, the blips, and you had like, different, just different creatures. Here, yeah, you just got the Terranids and that's it. I'll leave Battle Masters to the end, because that's a big fucking game. Okay, introduce the Advanced Dungeons of Dragons. Can't find my interactive CD. Yeah, it's two to seven players. The one with the highest number. This one is 1995. There's not much stuff in it. Most of the time when we used to play Dungeons and Dragons, we didn't actually We don't actually use many pieces, it's just mainly the character sheet in front of you. Just like that. Not in the pure. And the dungeon master used to just basically set the scenario up, which is just much easier. When we played that. Okay, let's start with the interactive video game. <laughs> With fucking Garon. This game never plays the same twice. Just like the bloody Star Wars one. Once again, I never really got into this one, as you can see. I've still got the, still got the stickers. Tape. Yeah, basically there's another race against the clock game. And you have to gain access to all five levels of the main computer. You basically have to pick up a phaser. That's all I remember. That's all I remember. Picking up a phaser. And then you have to race to the Clearum home world, that's what I remember. They've taken somebody's taken over the Enterprise and you have to get it back and then race to the Klingon home world. Bloody Garon. <laughs> Shut up you gatekeeper. Room in a minute, Battle Masters. Okay, one more TSR game. 
I am. Okay, Dragon Lance the game. This is another game used to go on for ages. Oh, my legs! Oh, 18 minutes to go. It's another quite big board. Man, I haven't played this for years. Look at the size of that board. Game rolls, quickly read, I think I remember. Oh, remember there was just a lance in the middle. Yeah, whoa. I think you had to spin, yeah. I think I'm sure you had to like spin the lance. Yeah, I remember just that having more dragon yeah, more dragons you have flying around. The better. Yeah, different levels, that's why they had like different. Do you? You want to play with a young one? Yeah, like different levels of when you're flying and stuff. And you get loads of magic cards. Oh man, I haven't played this for ages. Fucking have to get back into this. And the way you win is like the lance, that's like point point at you when you have all your dragons in the air. Oh, I remember correctly. Pick up the dice. You must roll your exact age before I return. You need as many dragons in the air as possible, and then you can kick some ass. Yeah, who's the young one? <laughs> okay, another little random board game I've never actually used. But yeah, Dodgers of Dragons, Dragon Quest. Just basic Dodgers of Dragons again. Oh, I don't know, I had a board. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to answer you, you idiot. Man, he starts with Dungeons and Dragons every Christmas and never really play on them. Yeah, there are really so many like Dodgers and Dragons kind of type of games. The Hobgoblin! I remember you. You attack really good, but you were really slow. Really free spaces. The Hobgoblins are large cousins of the Goblins. There they are. Proper metal. I like the games nowadays when they're like obviously when they're like plastic and still four times the price. Go to games workshop and everything's just plastic and I release you from the black hole. Yeah, I release you from your black hole. The guy is getting uglier and uglier as we speak. Oh man, how the hell am I gonna get that my board back together? I'll never know. Okay, one of my favourite games is Battle Masters. This was another, I would say, yeah, really simple 
Really simple game, but it has a massive map, if I remember correctly. <laughs> oh, Ferrero Rocher. Oh, this is going to take forever. Okay, I'm just going to turn it off because I want to set this up and show you guys how to play it. So I'll be back in a moment. Hi guys, back um, here. Basically, I'll just set up um, Battle Masters. This is just an, an MB game. And it's basically just miniatures on a massive mat. As you can see, it's quite big. You've got the Chaos Army to the right. Imperials to the left. There's a little like um, castle in the middle. And there are some random kind of hedges, but they keep on falling down. And also I've got some tiles in the middle. I'll just see if I can reach them. That you can just put anywhere actually on the map. Put that there so it's like a dead end. Put that there for like another river crossing. Put one of these over there. Yeah, the main aim is to destroy each other. Basically, each unit on the back has a number, and that's how many dice you roll. These are the dice. Skull means like a hit. And shield means defend. So when you roll, more skulls you get. That's the amount of hits. And when you're defending more shields, you sort of like defend those hits. So it is more of an attacking game because there is like literally three skulls in each dice but only one shield. Each unit has like three lives. We do have like a cannon. They sort of have a special special units. So you have a cannon which either can move or it can fire. And when the cannon does actually come up it has you've placed one of these on one of the targets and you do have I think it's yeah, you have eight cannon, cannon cards, and you turn them over one by one. Some have a bounce, some have a fly, and there's just two explosions as well. So you have to try and do your best <laughs> to try and aim at a target, and you have to pick basically these up until you reach the target which is this one, and when it goes with the head like that you turn it over just like that, but you obviously have these misfire ones that are in the middle as well now where have I put the ogre? for the chaos people they have a big ass ogre when the ogre comes up on these cards use your use your ogre cards which you can move three times or attack three times so when there's no one around, you just literally just move them free, and that's basically his end go. But when there's units around, you do actually shuffle them. And then move. Or attack. And you can slowly... You have to move and then attack. So that's pretty good. And when he... He's actually got six lives. And when you do actually do do damage to him, you actually take one of these cards away. So sometimes well, there's a few games where... The guy I was playing him against took all three of my attack cards and all I can do with the ogre was just move and he was that's absolutely pointless. So yeah. How we move the units. We've basically got deck of cards, which are shuffled, and each card has got like a designated unit on. As you can see there's like knights, then you've got like the archers crossbow men and it's normal sword guards which means one of each of these units you can move then you've got like the goblins as well you can move there's two goblins so you can move the goblins twice you can either move one goblin unit twice or two goblin units once and you've got the wolf riders which are really fast there are quite quite a few wolf cards in here 
then you obviously you got the bowmen, knights, and you just basically shuffle and slowly move all your units forward. Times two, I forgot what times two was. I think that means you can move four. Or you can move and attack and then move and attack. Because with these cards, when you see your character, you have to move. So say you've got two units right next to each other. Let's just put two. Right, that one. And that one. Yeah, so when the horse movement does actually come up, like that. Got down camera. You have to like move and then attack. Well, it's fallen over. That's the cannon card. This one's charge. Basically, you can move two, and when you attack, you have an extra dice. So you get six dice. Yeah, so it is a really good game. And you sort of have like a whole army car, a whole army move, which is the knights. Which can move lots of pieces. Um, where's the. There he is, that's the. It's the Imperial Army ones. You also get like a manual with it, and you've got your own little special campaigns that you have to do, where they sort of tell you where to put the units, and you have to do a specific task like get from one side to the other, at least get one unit to the other side, or take the castle. This is predominantly um, a two player game, but you can actually have basically two people on each side and you just share the units and move directly. In the castle, only units like foot units can go in there. And when you're in there, you get an extra dice for when you attack anyone outside. And when you're attacking, you get one less dice. Yeah, when you're attacking the castle, you get one less dice to roll. Yeah, so this is all like battle masters. It does. There are quite def various units. You've got like the, the wolf men. These are normal goblins. They only get two dice. But it's really annoying when you get two two skulls with these jobbies and you get one of the blowing knights and you get no no skulls at all and you get smashed up by little fucking goblins. <laughs> yeah, so it is a good game. There's a few expansion packs that give you an extra cannon and some knights. And there's another expansion pack that gives you an extra ogre and some knights as well. Yeah, so yeah. So this is Battle Masters, if you ever get ever get a chance to play it. Definitely pick it up. It's definitely one of the best ball games. Definitely one of the best art covers. Let's see if I can put it about there. Definitely one of the best art covers of a box game. The epic game of fantasy battles. Which is really good. Back when ball games were good. <laughs> yeah, so this is Battle Masters. Yeah, please comment and share. Show you experiences of all these war games I just just shown you. Yeah, cheers, people.